What do you mean you don't keep magazines from 1964? Hi guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back to my channel. I hope everybody's doing great today. So, I thought we'd do something a little um, educational, maybe. Um, some tips and tricks about resources and supplies to find for your junk journals. And they can be free or very, very little cost. So don't let um, not having money at the moment stop you. Don't let, you know, well, I live in the middle of nowhere and I don't have any resources. So we're going to talk about that today for a little bit. So some of the things that we can utilize for junk journals. Okay, so think about, I mean, everybody gets mail, right? Um, like this is a piece of junk mail that came from a credit card company, but look how cool the, uh, the packaging is, right? Kind of cool packaging. Um, let's see, let's see what else. The packet, uh, seed packets, you know, can make a nice pocket, right? What about paint chips or index cards? Tea stain those puppies, tea stain them. Gift tissue got this at Marshall's for a couple of bucks and it's looks like it's marble paper even in there. Mm -hmm. Kind of cool. Oh, napkins for decoupaging, for covering book covers, for I mean, you name it, collaging. Um, how about, well, here's a magazine. How about a magazine? Um, this one's from August of 1964. There are some pretty fabulous images in here and I even found um, an original coupon. <laughs> That's so cool. And the little mail-in ad to get your ladies home journal. I don't know, kind of kind of neat, right? Kind of neat. But think of all the images, just the text in here, um, all kinds of all kinds of good stuff. What about product packaging. So just for example, this is a just a brown paper bag that came from a grocery store. But look at the neat stripe graphics on it. Um, there's words you could cut out and use. You could tea stain or ink over the top of that. Um, lots of, you know, lots of material here. You could cover a book with it. On the inside it's just plain, so you could just use the plain side if you needed to. File folders, one of my personal absolute favorites. Uh, people throw these away by the thousands all the time. What about, you know, sheet music? Did your kid take accordion lessons and, you know, never ended up doing anything with it? Or maybe they did. Maybe they are Weird Al Yankovic and are making millions with an accordion. But you still have their sheet music laying around. I say tea stain it. <laughs> um, what about, like, you know I love Ledger. So even new Ledger can be made to look old if you tea stain it. You know, graph paper, same kind of the same difference with graph paper. Um, notebook paper, old notebooks. This one's kind of cool. I got this at a thrift store for like a quarter, and it's got, it even has numbers on on the side it's of the pages and it's already yellow. Regular notebooks. I mean you can tea stain the pages if you need to and never throw away the great chipboard on the back. This one's not too, this is like a medium light I would say, light medium. Uh, here's another paper bag, just a little one but you could fold that inside, bind that in with your pages and it could be a pocket. Here's some more. Got these at Michael's. Uh, gift wrap. So, you know, most people have either tissue paper or gift wrap laying around, even if it's just a roll of craft paper um, that they use to package things up with, you know, cover a book, um, use the graphics on it to sew onto a piece of file folder and make a pocket or an envelope. What about really old, out of style <laughs> sewing patterns? People are like giving these away, G giving these away. 
So this is really great tissue for uh, for decoupaging. You can even decoupage a book cover with that. And then of course there's also the instructions um, that's usually on a nice newsprint kind of paper. But I mean, you can use the cover, you can use the inside, all that stuff. Um, envelopes. Got a package of envelopes lying around? Use it. Use it. What about books? What about books? So, books are everywhere. Most people have them. Um, some of them are out of date as far as like information is concerned, you know, reference works, like an encyclopedia, like this encyclopedia, and I believe this one's from the 60s, um, which is great. It's, it's great and it still has, no, it's not even from the 60s. We're talking 1936, so we're a little out of date, just, just a little bit. Um, you know, just 90 years or so. It's whatever. So anyway, but look at all the great text in here. Nice, large pages. There's great graphics in here. Um, there's even photographs. All kinds of neat stuff. Just, and there's literally a thousand pages in here. A thousand pages. You could carefully just slice them out, bind them into a book, it adds interest and texture and different kinds of color and that kind of thing. These are pages from like a dictionary, old dictionary. Here's a page from a Jane Austen book. This is the inside, like the fly leaf from another uh, encyclopedia. This was gifted to me. It is an old, it was a spiral bound a typewriter textbook like when kids would go to high school and they would learn how you know to type from the 60s just already incredible color really cool font work and graphics it's like it was made to go in a junk journal it's it's done it's you just fold it in half and, and sew it in um, here's some more papers like this is some old graph paper this old uh, accounting ledger and then there's another piece of sheet music um, here are some more books. This one is an old cookbook with really neat fonts and there's even a little Valentine card that was in there. And I don't even know what this is. I got this at the recycle yard. I'll talk about that in a minute. Oh, three day diet plan, you know, just in case you need to, you know, apparently catch a man. <laughs> that's what we're all worried about. Guys, that's what all women are worried about. You know that, right? We're just all worried about catching y'all men. Oh, yeah. Kidding. All right. So, you know, do you want to gut it and put pages in it? Do you want to use those pages in other junk journals? Are you going to use the book cover as it is? Or are you going to cover it in one of the pre-said things? Also, other things that you could cover it in is, you know, old scarves, uh, old textiles. You got a skirt that doesn't fit anymore, but the fabric is great, right? Um, all that, just glue it on, right? Just glue it on, put some pages in it. Uh, here's another one I got at the recycle yard for your retirement. But there was some neat um, poetry in there and some pretty cute little, uh, little paintings for graphics. This was kind of the piece de la resistance. Yes. I got this for a dollar. A dollar, my friends, at a thrift store. It is from, I believe, 1930 something, 1939. And it's an atlas. And not only does it have incredible font, huge text, but the maps. Ugh. They're just insane. And I know you can find maps online. You can download them. You can print them out. All kinds of copyright free maps. But you know what? This is, again, this is 300 plus pages of just wonderful, wonderfulness. I mean, you can't, you cannot reproduce this color easily by printing it on a home printer. It's just not. You know, they don't use this paper anymore. There's just all the factors that go involved with using, you know, real, genuine, vintage, well, in this case, antique um, paper 
that was printed, you know, 95 or 85 years ago. Gorgeous, right? You want to gut it and make a big, big, huge book? You got paper this big? Go for it. Go for it. So, um, shoe boxes, uh, cracker boxes, um, they all have great chipboard on them. You can use to make pockets, uh, make covers, that kind of thing. Um, uh, let me think what else. Brochures. You can go to the Chamber of Commerce and get brochures with maps in them. Those are great. Um, use tea bags. How about broken jewelry? Broken jewelry, buttons, game pieces. All this stuff you can use as charms, embellishments. You could collage the front of a book. Um, you could make little hangy, little charm thingies off the, you know, off the spine, and you know, hang this stuff from it. Oh, just all the things. Okay, so I'm going to talk about copyright for just a minute because there is a lot of confusion around using pages from books. Okay, say it's not an old book. Say it's not out of copyright. Okay, so this is the deal. Are you going to take this book and use every single page in it and just make another Encyclopedia Britannica? No. No, you're not going to do that. Are you going to take the pages out and photocopy them and sell them? No. No. That, that would be copy writing. Um... We're not going to do that, right? We're not going to do that. What are we going to do? We're going to make a junk journal, and I might take one, maybe two pages from here. I may take a page from here. Maybe I'm going to take one of these pages. Maybe I'm going to take one of these pages, and one of these, and one of these, and one of these. Guess what? It's all okay. It's absolutely fine. Don't sweat it. Nobody cares. Like, nobody cares. I, I swear. The copyright police are not going to hunt you down because you used a page out of a book. It could be a brand new book that you just bought that just released yesterday. Doesn't matter. It could be page 532 of the next John Grisham novel. He doesn't care <laughs> because you're not trying to uh, reproduce what he has done. You're using a page in artwork. That's how it goes. It's just like using magazine images. And a lot of people get... Um, get confused about about being able to use stuff like that. But let's break it down into something that maybe will help everybody kind of envision, you know, the the situation here. Let's let's envision the situation. So all these things that I showed you that everybody basically on the planet who makes junk journals uses, right? We use napkins. We use gift tissue, we use paint swatches, we use junk mail, we use, you know, ledger paper and sheet music and seed packets, notebook paper, all this stuff. Even this, even, even this, all of this is copywritten. Every single bit of this, unless it is over a certain age, even junk mail is copywritten. It's, it's protected under a copyright by whomever the designer was that created this product. Napkins, copywritten. Tissue, copywritten. Um, ledger paper, you can bet your sweet patootie, copywritten. But nobody gets a bee in their bonnet about using this stuff, right? So what's the difference between a book or something else that somebody designed? There is absolutely no difference whatsoever. The scrapbook paper that you use, you know, when you buy a pad of scrapbook paper, guess what? It's copywritten. <laughs> it's protected. The designer that made it holds the rights to it. But you can use it. They know you're going to use it, right? So nobody gets all up in arms over that, right? Well, so just relax. Just, just, whew. let's all breathe. Let's all breathe. We're just going to relax here. Um, there are going to be some exceptions. Uh, for instance, every once in a while you will come across something that says that you are not allowed to use it in an item that is going to be for sale. For example, there are some fabrics out there that have uh, certain designers and it will be printed on the fabric, you know, not for, you know, only for personal use. You can't 
like use this in something that you're going to, you know, put out there for sale. Um, the Hello Cut, uh, Kitty Company, super touchy, super touchy. They don't even want you buying Hello Kitty stickers, slapping one in a junk journal and selling the junk journal. It's like they just have this thing. So if you, when in doubt, just look, just look. It'll say if they don't want you to do that, I'm going to say 99 times out of 100, it's going to say somewhere on the packaging, you can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. Um, every once in a while in a, in a book, in the front of a book, um, the author will have say something to that effect, that it's not to be used um, in something that's going to be for sale. Now, if you're going to make it for yourself or you're going to give it to grandma, guess what? Don't worry about it. The author's not going to come after you because you used page 536 out of the novel in a junk journal to give to grandma. It's it's just not you know. Um, call them and ask them if you if you if you're upset about it and you're you're can't sleep at night. Just give them a call. Say hey, can I use page 537 in a book to give to grandma? And they're going to go. Why'd you call me? Why'd you wake me up at 3 a.m.? Um, because Nick told me to. <laughs> uh, okay, so. I'll get off my soapbox. Everybody relax. Just whew, take a breath. So where do you find said things? All, all, all the stuff. Um, talk to your friends and your family. You know, people throw away stuff all the time. Are you looking for something in particular? Sheet music or an, an old recipe cookbook, something. Um, like old accounting books and stuff like that that mean nothing anymore. Um, go to the library. The library will have um, free books. They will have very, very cheap books. Thrift stores will have also book sales and very cheap books. Sometimes they give them away for, for free if they have too many, if they're damaged. Um, if you have a recycle yard in your area, um, I do, and they allow me, they know me, <laughs> to go in there and rifle through the book bin whenever I want. Um, like I said before, Chamber of Commerce um, will have brochures and maps and that kind of thing. Uh, or even when you walk into a store, you know, like a grocery store, you'll see the little rack, especially if you live in a touristy area, see a rack of all like the little local attractions and maps and stuff. Um, there's eBay, there's Craigslist. Craigslist even has like a free area. You can even put post a looking for are you throwing away old books? Are you, you know, I will come and get them. Um, free cycle. There's reuse stores where, you know, people will donate craft items and that kind of thing. And then you can go and purchase them at very, very low cost. Um, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Okay. Should I separate this into another video? Because this is getting really long. This is already, you know, 20 minutes. Um, Maybe I will separate this up. Next thing I wanted to talk about was finding images, like like digital graphic images. So let's talk about printables, like digital images and stuff that you can find online um, to use in your junk journals. Um, there are websites with free images that are um, copyright free. They say um, to check if you are in doubt, you know, to back up that that they're free. Um, so there are websites like the Graphics Fairy, um, Old Design Shop, uh, Pixel Scrapper, there's Getty, Pixabay, Unsplash, Burst, Adobe Spark. I'll list all these for you. Um, all these places have free images so they can you can go there and get them for free or some of them even have like um, subscription like membership so that you can have access to even more. And there's also free editing software online. There's either where they have a free version and then they have a paid version. So like GIMP and Paint.net and Canva and Pixlr and Adobe Photoshop Express is even online. Um, your phone, you can use your phone. And also like software that's already built into your computer like Paint 3D and Publisher and stuff like that if you've already got it some of that stuff can edit too. Um, so you just got to learn your software, you know, and if, if you want to manipulate an image, 
if you don't want to just click print, <laughs> um, you have to learn how to manipulate um, collage together, all that kind of stuff. That's another video. Um, but there are images out there. There is free software out there. Um, so, the next thing, but what if you don't have a printer? I don't got a printer. Wh what am I supposed to do with all these images? Do you have a PC? Do you have a computer? So let's say if you have a computer. If you have a computer, go get yourself a cheap thumb drive, okay? Something that'll hold images. Um, places like Staples and uh, all the print shops, FedEx and UPS store and the, you know, I know you guys overseas, you have your own type of print shops. You can, you know, drag and drop images onto a thumb drive, take the little thumb drive to the print shop and they'll print your images. Most of the time, at least all the ones that I deal with, because I will still use print shops because there's st there stuff that's too big for me or maybe I want like super duper quality. Um, they'll, you can bring your own paper. So no excuses, no excuses. What if you don't have a PC or something that you can put images on a thumb drive? There are print shops, like I know especially Staples. They have a kiosk that you can go in there. You can access Google Drive or Dropbox or your email. So even from your phone, because I know you're on YouTube, so you got something. <laughs> so you can you can save images, you can email them to yourself, you can save them to Google Drive or Dropbox, and then from the kiosk, all you have to do is sign in, grab those, and you can print them out from the kiosk. Um, but call around. Call around if you don't have, if you don't know, if you don't know, call around. I think, I think that just about covers, like, there's a lot more. Believe me, we have just scratched the surface. This is just stuff off the top of my head that um, I could think of. I've been, I've been um, only making junk journals for a few years, but I've been in graphic design for a um, long time, like almost two decades. So, so, so I've got some, I've got some resources, and I've, I've learned a couple of things. Okay, so another thing that I wanted to talk about today is. I am going to be letting go, purging, de-stashing um, of YouTube projects that I have made with you guys. I just don't have room to keep all this stuff, okay? So let me remind you of some of the things that I'll be getting rid of. Do you remember the Deserted Island Challenge? Do you remember? Do you remember? And this was one of, this was my entry, was the shell. Remember? So, that's going to go. Do you remember the quick and dirty snippet roll? Yes, yes, yes. Now remember, I did not decorate the whole thing, right? But, it is all snippeted. Snippeted. Do you remember the altered Altoid tin that we made together? How about, remember, the... Uh, you know, guide to starting junk journals and making. This is the McGuffey's primer. Going to be letting, going to be letting this go. Um, there's going to be another video about this. I'm just kind of giving you a, a, a preamble here. So, do you remember journal with me? Do you remember, remember journal with me from last year? Yeah. So, people are like. I know you're out there and you're going, um, Nick, uh, how can you get rid of this? Are you a monster? Are you just a heartless, emotionless monster? Yes, yes, no, no, I'm not. Um, so here's the deal. I feel like all of this stuff, plus there's a pile more, all of this stuff is just as much you as it is me. We created these things together. Um, this was a shared experience. So it's not just about me, it's about you. So, and the fact that I can't keep everything, there's just no way, there's no way, because I'm still making stuff. So, like, like this incredible, wonderful book that is filled with wonderful things, 
plus all the journal with me projects that are in here um, all the ephemera and we're talking there's some real honest to goodness old stuff in here like like the, the real deal man so there's you know 150 year old postcards and and calligraphy pen nibs from you know 1853 so this also will be I'm gonna be letting go so I have a question for you and I need your feedback and I would love to hear how you all feel about how I go about this because I'm just I'm just not sure so I'm gonna put up a poll Oh my god. Oh jeez. Okay. So I'm going to put up a poll. I'm going to ask you, you know, should we do a blind bid? And what that is is that there's going to be a list of items, you know, all all the items. And let's say let's say you you want to give your best bid on on this. You say, "Okay, my name is blah blah blah, my email is blah blah blah, and my best bid on the McGuffey primer is this. And I also want to bid on the shell book. And so my best and final offer is this. Okay. So if you guys decide on a blind bid, um, I would suggest that when you make your offer that it be not just like a whole dollar, but like to a penny, you know, X dollars and you know 14 cents or something and then that way it would it really would help out with you know there being a tie because if there is a tie then what I'll do is I will contact um, the parties involved and ask for another bid okay the other thing I could do is just load them up on eBay like a three-day eBay auction uh, for each thing um, or list them on Etsy so it'll be it'll be your choice. I will put up the poll, a, a real poll, and uh, you guys can make a decision. And we will we'll just do what the majority thinks is best. Sound good? Sound good? All right, guys. Because there's you know there's stuff there's stuff that I I can't keep everything. I just I just can't keep everything. And yes, perhaps even the lap book because it was going to be going to a friend of mine who is moving. But I ended up getting her something else instead. Well, making her something else instead. So it, that didn't happen. So all the things. But I will do another video about, about all that stuff. So don't worry about that. Well, you know, this one was mostly about, you know, junk journal resources. So just wanted to add the snippet. Okay, guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. And if you have any junk journal resource favorites that you want to share, you can put them in the comment section below and, you know, help a sister out, right? We'll help each other out. All right, guys, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and I will see you all really, really soon in the next video. Bye, guys.